Hello everyone and welcome to episode number six of The Car Flip Show. Now today's show is gonna be in reference to what it takes to start and run a car dealership. I'm gonna be answering some specific questions from Hawk who is a member of our um, the car flip email list and like right now if you're not a member of our email list like pause the video like I I'll wait I'll be here when you come back go to thecarflip.com put your email address in the top um, little section up there that way you'll get our email updates this question is actually in response to an email that I sent out saying what can I help you with where they could ask absolutely any question that they wanted I made personalized videos for most of them um, Hawks is actually getting turned into um, a car flip show episode so his question had to do with dealerships, and so we're gonna dive right into it. I'm actually gonna put the first part of his question on the screen right now, and I'm gonna read it in front of me. And it says, I have been buying and selling cars for three years, um, sell between 15 and 25 a year, and he's been using the profits for his college tuition, which is awesome. I actually paid my way through college um, flipping cars myself. Uh, he says he's been successfully making about $500 per car, uh, but he set himself up for a few $1,500 flips, which is awesome. Um, currently, he buys from Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook, LetGo, and sometimes eBay, and other public auctions. Now, public auctions, we haven't got into those. Those can be tricky. Um, so for beginners, I would avoid the public auctions. But he says, I've bought and sold a few from Copart as well, and have had good luck and understand how it is a huge opportunity. I'm hoping to eventually open up my own dealership. So a lot of folks that I talk to actually eventually have this same goal in mind. They would like to one day start a dealership, but they're flipping currently maybe from their house or maybe they have someone at another dealership that lets them consign a little bit. I'm not the biggest fan of consignments, but um, whatever arrangement they currently have, their end goal is to start a dealership. So we're gonna get into several questions that he lists for me. He has some very specific questions. Um, so I'm gonna actually list them out. We're gonna put them up one by one and I'm gonna go through them here. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm counting off, I printed off his email, so I've got that here in front of me. So we're gonna start with the first question, which is, what do you think is the startup capital required to open a dealership? And he had a few bullets below that. He says, can you give me an average range to have in mind? And how much did you have for your capital investment? Um, if I was going to say the least, the minimum that you needed to start out, and of course I can't put an exact dollar amount on it and it'd be right for everyone, so I can only give you a range or a gauge, and if I was gonna say the minimum required, I would say about $30,000. That's gonna be enough to let you survive for a few months paying bills. For me, it's a good chunk of change just to have this building. Um, you, the office that you see here, as well as a shop attached to it, um, costs me a lot of money monthly, as well as the lights. Um, the power, the internet, all of that costs money. So you need to have some money set aside to be able to pay those bills as well as money to be able to purchase cars to actually have on your lot. Because if you don't have cars, it's kind of tough to have a car dealership and you're gonna go out of business very fast if you can't replenish cars on your front line. So I'd say you would at minimum need to have 30,000. That number could go up or down depending on where you are and your level of expertise. So 30,000 would be that number for me. Um, and his follow up little bullets there were, can you give me an average range, um, I guess to have in mind? And I would say take that 30,000, you could go 5,000 either direction, maybe even 10,000. You might get start up with 20. If you really wanted to bootstrap it, you could start up with 15, but just remember, if you don't sell some cars in that first month, you're going out of business really fast. So um, his follow-up to that was, how much did you have for your initial capital investment? And for me, I had $75,000. That was enough to allow me to have a front line full of cars. Now, having, you know, keep in mind, I was selling and still do sell lower cost cars. When I first started out, I actually had you know cars anywhere from three to five thousand dollars, which meant I had anywhere from a thousand to three thousand per car. So you can buy quite a few cars with that seventy-five thousand. Also, I had to pay the bills here. I wanted to have a few months um, you know set aside in case we didn't sell some right off the bat, which it was slow starting out. I mean, it was very slow uh, because people are riding by and seeing a business that wasn't there before. Um, so it's gonna take you some time for people to get acclimated with you being in that location before they'll tr actually trust and stop and look at your cars. Um, also, something that I did that I wouldn't necessarily recommend you do right off the bat, but I had a full-time mechanic day one. Um, I, he'd been doing some side work for me. He was actually on his way out of the business when I was starting mine. So I grabbed him, hired him, hoped for the best. It worked out, he's been great, he's still here. Um, but I had a mechanic also, so I didn't just have to pay my salary, I didn't have to pay my bills. I had to make enough to also pay Rob's bills. So 
that's not something I would recommend. It's something I did and it's worked out so far. So that was his first question. His second question is, what are the main factors uh, what are the main factors to your month-to-month -month dealership overhead and what is your current overhead? Now, I, I took a, you know, I'll show you, it wasn't very detailed. I took a pen real quick, jotted down some numbers and this is just off the top of my head. I pay $2,500 a month to be here, like to just have this location, just to have a place. Um, I've got $2,500 there. If I was going to say labor a month, I have a full-time uh, mechanic. I have two guys. One works Saturdays for me. Um, I pay him 100 bucks to be here on Saturday. He details and whatnot during the day. And also he can show cars. If he sells a car, I pay him a commission. And then I have another guy, a high school guy, that uh, he actually was in episode number four. He was my camera guy that episode. Um, his name's Christian. He, did, he does some detailing for me. And he's on a week-to-week -week basis. Sometimes he'll work 10 hours, sometimes he'll work 15. If we're really busy, I'll bring him in for more. Um, so it can vary a little bit depending on what I need from him. But I would say I've probably got anywhere from 2000 to $2,500 a month in overhead just in salaries. So, um, so I'm already up to $45,000, $5,000. Um, insurance for me costs about 200 bucks a month. Uh, internet's 100 bucks. Phone, I think it's around 170. Now that's my line, I have a couple other lines. It's a business account, you know, my wife has her phone under there, we've got a couple tablets. Um, but 170, utilities, roughly 200. That number probably is a little low by the time you factor in. I was just thinking actually, um, power, water, those probably come out to about 200. But I also have trash, I've got a dumpster out back, and I've got gas from, or I guess for heat in the winter. So. That definitely could change. The number I had here was 5170. It's probably closer to 55 by the time I buy, you know, paper towels and Windex and this and that little supplies we're gonna have around here. So, roughly $5,500 is what I have to make just to keep the doors open. Now that doesn't include what I have to actually take home to pay, you know, my house bill or you know my kid's school bill or whatever. So that's $5,500. Um, I think my bottom dollar that I have to make every month to basically live and survive is $8,000 a month. Now that sounds like a lot, but when you break it down into car flips, that's about four flips and my average of $2,000 per car. Um, obviously that's going to go up and down, so if I make a thousand on one, I'm not complaining, but every now and then you get the gust of three or four thousand dollar profits. Um, you'll see some people making car flip videos and they want to talk like every single car they do is $4,000 or $5,000. I just haven't seen that, so I don't feel like that is um, doable every single time, but $2,000 is a good target to aim for. So if I sell four cars at that $2,000, I can pay the bills for my business, for my employees, and also for my house, or I guess my personal bills. Um, anything over and above that is profit, which eventually gets turned around and put back into the business. Um, so he, his next question is about floor plans. It is, uh, what are the requirements uh, for getting a floor plan? And uh, I made a video before he talks about, and he appreciates me making that. Um, he follows that up with, if a dealer loans me his license um, and lets me work under him as a salesman, he got that in parentheses, as a salesman, um, can I still apply for a floor plan? Now, I'm gonna be completely honest on the requirements for a floor plan. I'm not 100% sure. I, I did a video, I don't know, maybe a month ago, three weeks, a month ago, about what my floor plan looked like, how it worked, and if you want more information on that, that's another video for another time. Essentially, a floor plan is a bank loaning you money on a per car basis for a limited amount of time. Mine is for 180 days, broken up into 60 day increments, which allow you to, if you sell the car within 15 days, you pay less than if you sold it in 95 days. So you're gonna pay installments on that for the 60 days. After 180 days, you owe the money to the lender. If you don't pay it, they're gonna come repossess the vehicle. You don't wanna get into that. You don't wanna get on bad terms with a floor plan because you'll come in one morning and all your cars will be gone. So. The requirements, honestly, Hawk, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I basically called a floor plan company, the one that I Googled and I guess thought was the best. It's called Carbucks. They're based out of Greenville, South Carolina. I like their terms. Um, but basically, I called them. This is when I was just starting out, so I had my $50,000. Like, I'd spent some money already, so I had like $50,000 in the bank. Um, I, come to, I guess I came to find out that a really big thing for them is seeing how much money you have in a bank account. 
So if you've only got 500 bucks in a bank account, you're gonna have trouble getting a floor plan because they wanna see money um, sitting there in case you don't pay off a car. They wanna know that you can. Like if you have a car for 180 days and it's you know gonna roll out of their program, how are you gonna pay for it? So I happen to have that large sum when they, um, you know, when they initially looked at me. Obviously, I've got more of that invested in the business now. Um, another thing they're gonna look at is credit. So you need to have a decent credit score. Um, they're gonna determine your credit worthiness. If you have had you know, four cars repossessed and you had a house foreclosed and whatever, you know, your dog got impounded, I don't think that's a thing, but, um, you know, they're probably not gonna wanna lend to you because they're gonna see that you're not very trustworthy. So I don't know what the exact score you have to have. I don't know the exact number they want you to have in the bank account, but they are gonna ask for at least three months bank statements. So they're gonna wanna see on a consistent basis how much you've had in the bank. So they can kind of get an idea of your financial situation there. And the credit score, I don't know 100%. Um, the credit score will also come into play when you go to get bonded. You have to have a, in North Carolina, you have to have a $50,000 bond, which sounds big and scary. It costs me $300 a year. There's actually better prices if you buy at multiple years, if you buy two and three years at a time, you can save some money there. I think two years is 500. So your credit score plays into that as well. But uh, the exact details on that, I couldn't tell you. You could definitely Google some floor plan companies, call in, you don't have to tell them you don't have a dealership. Just ask some questions as if you had a dealership and they can give you more details than I can. Um, Carbucks, AFC, uh, Nextgear are all really um, reputable companies in the floor plan industry. There are plenty you know, more, but those are three that I'm familiar with. Uh, moving on to the next question. Um, or I guess the second part of that question was if he is renting a dealer's license, which I'm honestly not a huge fan of because your entire business is contingent upon somebody else's business. And if they decide they're tired of working with you or they feel like you're making too much money and they're missing out on some sales, they can cut you off and you're done. So I'm not a big fan of that. Another part of that is they're gonna most of the time require your files to be kept with them. So if you're buying a car at an auction with their dealer's license, the title is gonna be left at their dealership, and which means the title is gonna be in their name. So it kind of leaves you, um, I guess, susceptible to, um, I, I guess, to them. It leaves you um, kind of powerless if they ever got upset or angry with you. Um, you know, they could end your business like right then if they wanted to. So I'm not a big fan of that. But if you just had your salesman's license through somebody, no, I can't see any way that a four plan company would give you a floor plan because it's not your business. The dealer who you're renting your license from would be the one who would have to get the floor plan because the entire business and the bank account for the business would be in his name. So that wouldn't be a possibility that I'm aware of. And uh, so yeah, I, I, can't, I can't imagine that working. Um, next question, can you go through more examples of floor plans? We did that, um, AFC, um, we've got, uh, off the top of my head, I'm losing it here. AFC, Next Gear, Carbucks. Um, such as vehicles you currently have, more pricing examples, and the process it takes to get one. We went through the process somewhat. Um, examples, um, you know, I just actually had one that did go 180 days. It was a Jeep Wrangler that we ended up, you know, having to put a transmission in. It ended up having, it just had several issues we didn't know about, and we kind of put it on the back burner. So after that 180 days, actually just two days ago, I had to come up with $7,600 to pay this thing off. So that's an example of how it could be difficult situation, especially if you were low on cash when one was due. Um, generally, the fees that I'm paying on a 60-day um, basis range anywhere from 110 to 200, and that's because of the price range that I'm in. If you're buying $20,000 vehicles, or if you're buying you know, $50,000 vehicles, which people do all the time on four plans, um, you could end up with significant payments due if they weren't sold in the 60 days or the term that they gave you. Um, just recently, I actually applied for another four plan Honestly, just kind of for fun, I was just curious. Uh, the company was AFC, I mentioned them, and without really much effort, they gave me uh, $150,000 $150, worth of uh, credit with them, and it wasn't very difficult. I got $130,000 of just vehicle, and then I got, a, I think, $20,000 for motorcycles, ATVs, that kind of thing. I thought about experimenting with those. Um, so for me, it wasn't difficult to get approved with AFC, their terms weren't as good as with um, Carbucks. For them, they do a 60, 30, 30. So instead of 180 days to pay the car off, you have 120 days. Um, after the first 60 days, you have to pay them 10% of the vehicle. So instead of the 120 or the $200 fee, 
let's say you buy a $5,000 car after the first 60 days, if you haven't sold it, you're gonna pay them $500. After the next 30 days, you're gonna pay 5% of the remainder, which would be whatever, I'm not gonna do the math in my head. And then after the next 30 days, you basically pay them for the car if you haven't sold it. Now the money that you're paying, they call them curtailments, actually go towards the principal, so it's not like you're just giving the money for nothing, um, but there's also a fee associated with the 10% and the 5%, so it costs a little more to deal with them. But just as a backup, I thought it'd be something, I guess, good to have. So we've got $150,000 in addition to our car bucks that we can also use. Um, he goes on to say, what sort of credit score do you need for a floor plan? As I mentioned above, I'm not 100% sure. And I'm just going through these one by one. So if I've answered them ahead of time, I'll just reference those. Um, can you give us some floor plan companies? You know, I did Carbucks, AFC, Nextgear. Those would be the ones I would check with. But if you're renting or if you don't have your own dealer's license currently, you're not going to have that option. Um, he, his next question is, I understand you have a mechanic. Do you pay him by the job? And I'm assuming he's contrasting that with, or a salary. Um, some mechanics, I do have one mechanic that I use kind of on the side. I do pay him on a job by job basis. So he charges me $35 per labor hour. So if you have a, uh, a system like All Data or Mitchell On Demand, they're gonna give you an estimated time frame for certain jobs. Just one for example, I currently have a 2004 Mercury Mountaineer. It costs for 11.1 hours to replace the timing chains. He's gonna be doing that job for me, so it's gonna be 11.3 times 35. That's gonna be the labor that I'm gonna be paying for this job. Now, the parts weren't that expensive, so that's the main cost is gonna be that labor. So that's what a per job basis would look like. My mechanic that I have in house is not. He's on salary, I pay him a set amount every single week, and he, I do pay him weekly. Um, so for me, that works out because I always have something for him to do. We always have a big job or a complicated, um, we call them search and destroy jobs. You've got an issue you, you can't quite figure out based on the check engine light, so you gotta basically search and destroy and uh, figure it out you know, line by line. So I pay him salary. If you are just starting out, that's not gonna make sense. You absolutely do not need to do that. It made sense for me because of the volume that I'm doing. Um, but if you don't have enough work for the mechanic to do and you get three weeks in or six months in and you don't have any more work for him to do, um, I, you know, I don't wanna hire somebody and not be able to pay that salary consistently. So it's worked out for me. I wouldn't recommend that right off the bat. But uh, if you can find someone that's reliable that can do a job by job basis for you where you can you know, basically set the tone on how much you're gonna spend monthly based on what you send them, that would be ideal. Um, Moving on, let's see, what is your, what's the monthly cost for me for my mechanic? Um, I'm paying him roughly $2,000 a month. So that, you know, it can vary depending on if we have, um, you know, overtime, that kind of thing. Sometimes we get into projects that take a little longer, but roughly $2,000 a month is what I'm paying my mechanic, which is, you know, $500 a week. Um, when you, the next question is, when you open up a dealership, you have a greater potential to create profit, which is true. Um, but there's also, the, and he calls it the cost to play the game, um, or overhead every month. Um, when you don't have, I guess what you don't have when you're flipping, if I could read, that would be better. Um, how many cars do you, and he's talking about me personally, have to sell per month to pay your overhead? Now we talked about this earlier, for me it's four. That's at my $2,000 profit, that's four cars times 2,000 equals 8,000. That allows me to pay my $5,500 in expenses here, as well as the 35, you know what, I'm doing my math wrong. It can't cost me nine, see this is the beauty of doing a video and not editing it that much. Um, I have $9,000 in monthly expenses, so I guess technically that would be five. And I did this on the, just kind of real quick. So I guess for me, technically that's five, that four wouldn't be right. Now if I do really well on four, great. Um, maybe I would hit that 9,000, but I believe it would be five. So I've got to sell five cars every single month just to pay the bills, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 60 cars a year, which is double, almost triple, you know, triple to quadruple what you're currently doing. So just imagine how much more work that's going to involve to do three to four times the cars that you're currently doing. A lot of people that are talking about getting a dealership, I tell them to be sure they don't jump the gun and make that decision too early because there's a lot that goes into running a dealership that a lot of people don't anticipate. So you kind of, I guess you want to get the boat close, like if you're standing on a dock and a boat's getting close, you want to wait till the boat gets close enough so you can kind of make that leap. You don't want to jump too early and miss the boat. We've all seen those videos on YouTube where the people don't quite make it. You don't want to be the guy. Um, and his last question is, what were the noticeable differences that you came across 
from flipping cars to running a dealership that you had to overcome. Um, there were two that came to mind right off the bat and one was time, the, the time invested. When I was doing this at my house, you wake up when you want to, um, you do what you want to do during the day, it's a very laid back lifestyle. Um, to some extent, that's nice. I'm the kind of person that likes to be doing something all the time. I don't like to sit around. Um, it, it kills me when I go on vacation and I have to sit on the beach. Like I, that's not for me. We went on a cruise, I don't know, four or five years ago. I guess it's been that long because I wasn't the biggest fan of the cruise. Uh, my wife's laying on the deck, she's loving it, and it's driving me crazy. I'm literally like pacing the deck and there was a basketball court. So I, pay, I played basketball like the entire um, cruise because I just couldn't sit around. So for me, I enjoy the day-to-day, -day, the action, the doing this, doing that, running here and there. Um, so that was one of the things though, the time investment. It takes a lot more time to run a dealership. And this kind of goes along with that, but the customer service aspect takes a lot more time to deal with customers. When you sell a car out of your driveway, they drive off into the sunset, you never see them again. Or maybe you sold it in a you know grocery store parking lot or the Walmart parking lot. They're gone, they're out of your life, you're never gonna see them again. From a car dealership standpoint, when someone buys that $3,000 car from you and the alternator goes out two months later and they come back and they can't believe that you sold them a $3,000 car that would ever have to be repaired. Um, just had a lady here the other day and uh, kind of a similar situation. She bought the car and her exact words were, I just wanted to buy a car that was never gonna need anything. And I, I think I laughed, I probably shouldn't have. And I said, you know, ma'am, we don't sell those. Like you, you can't buy a car that's never gonna need any work. And I pointed over to my wife's car, which we were servicing. I was like, that's my wife's car. And it is having a radiator put in it right now. Um, so the customer service aspect is something that, that, that is key to staying in business because your word of mouth and what people think of you will take you a long way or it will keep you from succeeding. So the customer service will take time. You're gonna have people that stop in when you're in the middle of something and they wanna look at cars and you stand with them for 30 minutes and show them this and show them that and then you never see them again. Like you're never gonna get that 30 minutes back. And that happens a lot when you have a dealership, especially when you have multiple cars for sale. Um, so that's something that would take I guess I'm getting used to the customer service aspect if you've not dealt with that before. Um, you have to deal with phone calls, you have to deal with paperwork, you have to deal with a lot of things that don't even come into play when you're flipping from your house, your driveway, you know, the Walmart parking lot. So I hope that helps talk. I'm gonna put my paper down here. Um, this took a little longer to get back to you than I'd hoped because we had way more people respond to that email. I think we had like 50 responses. I made a video for most of those, um, well for some of them, a lot of them overlapped, but uh, I sent a personal response back to every single person. And yours had the most questions and took the most time to record, so I pushed it off till the end. Um, but I'm glad I did because we've got a car flip show out of it. So Hawk, I hope that helps. If you have any follow-up questions, let me know and I'll get those answered for you. Um, if you have watched this far, like you're awesome, you're amazing. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, I would love it if you would subscribe to us here if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, go like our page, um, you know, The Car Flip. It, I think it says The Car Flip with Justin Carper. Um, and if you're not a member of the Facebook group, you need to go to thecarflip.com, put your email address in. I'm gonna send you a link to join that. It's absolutely free. And you're gonna get to connect with uh, car flippers from all around the world. I mean, on a, on a daily basis, I'm talking to people from in my backyard here in North Carolina, to people in Africa, I had a guy from Australia, I had people from Iceland, uh, you know, all over the place, people are doing this and they're, um, they're making a lot of money. So I hope that is something that's interesting to you and if so, stay tuned, we're gonna be putting out a lot more content in the near future. But for now, that is all for The Car Flip Show, episode six. I'll see you in seven, have a good one.